In this video, we'll be looking at one theorem and several examples of determining um, sequence convergence. So the theorem that we want to um, first state to do with our sequences is a squeeze theorem for sequence convergence. So we had a squeeze theorem when we looked at limits of functions. We also have a squeeze theorem for our sequences. So the squeeze theorem tells us that if we have our sequences a n less than or equal to b n less than or equal to c n, so a n, b n, and c n are all sequences, and b n is a sequence that's bounded between a n and c n for all n bigger than or equal to some big n. So this means that this inequality holds far enough out in the sequence. So for um, an nth little nth term in the sequence, that's big enough. Okay, and the limit as um, n goes to infinity of a n is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of c n, which both go to the same limit l, then this will mean that the limit as n goes to infinity of that sequence b n must also be going to l. So the picture that we have in mind for the squeeze theorem here is that I have my um, sequence here a n, which maybe does something like this. I have my sequence c n that maybe does something like this. So this is c n and this is, oops, this is a n down here. And then I have my sequence b n, which has to stay between them. It could go down, it could go back and forth, but it's somehow bounded between those. Let me do b n here in this different, different color. But if bn has to stay between the sequences an and cn, and an and cn are getting closer and closer to the same value as we go far enough out in the sequence, then bn must be approaching that value as well. Okay, so we have this idea of the squeeze theorem. We might use it in one of our following examples. So let's look at several examples on determining sequence convergence. So in this first example, I have the sequence um, cosine squared n over 2 to the n. So we know that in order to determine whether a sequence converges or diverges, I have to look at trying to find the limit as n goes to infinity of that nth term. So looking at this, if I um, tried to take this limit by looking at the limit of the numerator and the denominator, I'm going to run into a little problem. So the limit as n goes to infinity of cosine squared n is going to end up being does not exist because the cosine function we know oscillates back and forth. Even cosine squared is still going to oscillate. It's just going to be between 0 and 1 instead of between negative 1 and 1. So this limit is not going to be getting closer and closer to any finite number. Okay, that, that limit doesn't exist because the values of cosine squared are going to oscillate. The limit as n goes to infinity of 2 to the n is just going to be going to infinity. So just having this does not exist over infinity doesn't really help me figure out what that limit is. So the idea to help us here is to try to use the squeeze theorem. Okay, so let's see how we can do that here. Well, what do I know about some bounds on the cosine squared function? Okay, remember with the squeeze theorem, we would need to start out with um, being able to say that the sequence that I'm interested in is bounded between two other um, sequences or two other values. We know that cosine squared is between 0 and 1. So because we have those bounds, that's going to be a big help in trying to apply the squeeze theorem here. So if I take this cosine squared n um, between 0 and 1 and divide each part of this inequality by 2 to the n, I get 0 is less than or equal to cosine squared n over 2 to the n is less than or equal to 1 over 2 to the n. So now I have part of the statement of the squeeze theorem here where this 0 here is my a n, my b n is like the cosine squared n over 2 to the n, and the c n is like that 1 over 2 to the n. Okay, so we have this, this inequality holding here for all n. 
And we can say that we also see that the limit as n goes to infinity of the a, a n, the lower bound there, 0 is equal to 0. And the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over 2 to the n also equals 0. So by the squeeze theorem, we can say that the limit as n goes to infinity of cosine squared n over 2 to the n must also be equal to 0. So when you're thinking about when you might have to use the squeeze theorem, you would write down a limit that you might be trying to take. And if it looks like some of the individual pieces of your limit are um, going to something that doesn't exist, they're not converging to some finite value, but you do know that um, the thing that you're trying to take the limit of is bounded between some particular values, you can try to apply the squeeze theorem to find the limit in that case. So let's just look at a couple more examples here. So in this next example, I have the sequence 2 to the n plus 1 times 3 to the negative n. So to answer a question about sequence convergence here, I'd be looking at the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n. So this looks like it might be some sort of geometric sequence. So we might try to write it in that form. So I notice that I can rewrite this as 2 times 2 thirds to the n. Okay. So I notice that this is a geometric sequence where I have r equals 2 thirds, which is less than 1. So if we remember, um, the properties of a geometric sequence, when you would have that ratio value less than 1 in a geometric sequence, you're multiplying your previous term by something less than, than 1 each time to get to the next term, which means your terms are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So this limit as n goes to infinity of 2 times 2 thirds to the n, taking 2 thirds of the previous thing each time, that 2 thirds to the n is going to 0 here. So we would say in this case that our sequence of 2 to the n plus 1, 3 to the negative n, converges to 0. Okay. So let's look at another sequence here. Let me change back to the color blue. So here I've got the nth term of my sequence is negative 1 to the n over 2 times root n, and I'm interested in trying to determine what the limit as n goes to infinity of this term is. So I want the limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 to the n over 2 root n. Okay. Now because I have that negative 1 to the n in there, I am going to have some kind of alternating behavior. Um, but notice that when n is even, this will be 1 over 2 root n. When n is odd, this will be negative 1 over 2 root n. Okay, so it'll be positive 1 over 2 root n for n even, and negative 1 over 2 root n for n odd. Okay, so we could have a problem with this limit existing if these two parts here, um, what's happening with the sequence with n is even and what's happening with n is odd, go to two different values. But if they go to the same value, then this limit will exist. So we're not sure about this. So let's look at the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over 2 root n. Well, we can see that the denominator here would be getting bigger and bigger, so the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over 2 root n would be equal to 0. If we look at the limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 over 2 root n, we can see that that's also going to 0. So we can say that our limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 to the n over 2 root n is equal to 0. So the sequence of a n equal to negative 1 to the n over 2 root n does converge to 0. So let's consider our next example. So here I have a sequence where I have terms 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and I can see the pattern here is, is going to be um, strings of zeros. I'll have four zeros next and then a one, and then five zeros and, and then a one, etc. So I want to think about what this might be converging to or not. Um, 
So the idea here is that this, this sequence diverges because it's never going to get closer and closer to a single value. It's going to be a, a type of oscillation. So it's going to be zeros for a while, and then a one, and then zeros for a while, and then a one, and it's never going to get closer and closer to one value. So here we would say the limit as n goes to infinity of the given sequence doesn't exist, so the sequence diverges. So remember, besides having um, sequences that go off to infinity, you can also have sequences that oscillate and that diverge because of the oscillation. Okay. So we'll look at just one more example in this particular video lecture. So here we have the sequence n over n plus 5 raised to the nth power, being the nth term of our um, particular sequence. So I'm going to need to look at trying to find the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 5 to the n. So notice if I look at what the limits of these different pieces go to, n over n plus 5 is going to 1 as n goes to infinity, and this n power will be going to infinity. So this is what we would call a 1 to infinity indeterminate form. And we had a particular strategy for dealing with 1 to infinity indeterminate forms in general that we learned back in section 6.7. But because of the particular form that we have here, we can actually make use of this fact. So that's what we're going to do in this problem. So recall that the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 plus a over x to the x is equal to e to the a, okay, which we could also write as the limit as x goes to infinity of x plus a all over x to the x being equal to e to the a. So let's look at how we can try to use that fact in this problem. So I'm trying to compute this limit. Notice that I can rewrite what I have here as the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n over n plus 5 to the negative n. So I have a negative exponent, move it to the denominator. Now when I have a negative exponent, that means that I can take the reciprocal. So I can make this limit equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over, instead of n over n plus 5 to the negative n, I can make that n plus 5 over n to the n. So now we can see how that looks like this form that we have over here. I have a variable n here plus this number 5 all over n raised to the nth power. Okay. So notice that the limit as n goes to infinity of my n plus 5 over n to the n would be equal to e to the fifth using this fact. So I know that this limit here is true as x goes to infinity for all x. So the limit as n goes to infinity just so long um, the integer values here of this, this same form, I'm going to get e to the fifth power as well. So that means that my limit that I'm interested in would be 1 over e to the fifth or e to the negative fifth. So here we can say that the sequence converges to e to the negative 